for Morning Hawk Creations and today's tutorial is going to be an orangutan. This is another eye study. Today we'll be using the Inktense pencils. Um, now this is MJ. MJ was photographed at the Milwaukee Zoo. She has since passed away so I apologize but I cannot get a better reference picture of MJ. Uh, one of the things I really want to point out about orangutan eyes is that on first glance they look almost completely black and that is in fact not true and even on this shot of MJ it's really hard to tell any definition between the irises and the white of the eye and even the, into the pupil. Orangutan's eyes are exceptionally dark and um, the whites of their eyes are very dark compared to um, what one would consider uh, a normal white of the eye. They're much closer to maybe like dog eyes where the white of the eye is very very dark. Now I am going to spend quite a bit of time on getting this face light in uh, and that's just basically to give these eyes some context. You'll see me going back and forth into the eyes and back and forth into the face and um, that's just to kind of give it uh, a little bit more context. Now I did start up really light and that's because it's easier to go dark, not so easy to uh, remove color. And once these Inktense pencils uh, dry, they are permanent, so uh, can't lift them out like you can color pencil. And much like I noted on the mandrel study, you're going to have one eye that's a little bit lighter than the other, and on this one, it actually is the first eye once again. Well, this one on the right hand side has a little bit more glint. Uh, the other eye is actually quite a bit darker. It's a little bit more in the shadow. Now if you haven't worked in these Inktense pencils yet, they're rather interesting. Uh, they don't have a typical array of color like um, a set of paints were. Uh, the uh, one that I've typically been using that kind of comes off as like a brownish gray is actually called sepia. And then there's also the uh, dark deep blue, which is close to an ultramarine blue. And then there's something called willow, which gets used a lot in the uh, in the muzzle. And uh, then there's baked earth, which is kind of uh, similar to a raw sienna. And then uh, Mustard, which is real close to the yellow, I used the mustard in the eyes. And then cadmium orange, uh, which also got used in the eyes. Uh, so easier to lay in color light and then build up with layers. At some point you're going to see me go in here with a hair dryer and just dry the layer because I was really saturating the paper. And this is uh, the same thing we did the uh, mandrel study on. It's the uh, Strathmore watercolor paper. It's the cold press, so it's got a, quite a bit of tooth to it. And because the uh, environment that this orangutan is kept in, it's actually painted um, a pretty awful powder blue. So again, one of the things I want to note is that um, the environment is going to reflect color back onto your subject. So with this uh, particular orangutan, even though orangutans are really known for the really, really bright, vivid color and even down into the deep oranges, um, MJ's face came off as really, really blue and purple um, because of her surrounding environment. And laying down an awful lot of color. Now I know that I did say right on that the white of the eyes um, does get really dark. It's really, really veiny. Um, because the eyes and the irises are so dark, it's really hard to distinguish a whole lot of detail because in comparison to their size of their face, uh, I kind of put uh, orangutans in the same family um, proportionally as like bears where they have a really big massive face area and very small eyes. So getting some of that minor detail is really hard to capture. 
Um, but you will see me once I get some kind of feel for the surrounding area um, around MJ's face uh, so we can get some depth and proportion into her face um, that I will go back through in the white of her eyes and darken that up. And I did use a lot of blues and I actually um, through the course of doing this kind of got a little inspired and I thought oh, you know I could kind of make an environmental scene and just kind of keep her her eyes as like parts of a mountain or parts of a rock and turn her the sides of her muzzle into like a river and it would be kind of cool but I, I was trying to stay focused it was really hard I was having an ADD moment I really wanted to go off on this tangent where I turned her face into a uh, a landscape and MJ is the, you've got two kinds of um, of orangutans you've got Bornean um, orangutans and you've got Sumatran orangutans MJ is actually uh, a crossbreed of the two so he, she is both Sumatran and Borneo and as you see that reference picture that I'm using is fading out and that's because the eye shot itself is not that great and I did go on the web and I did find one from um, the World Wildlife Fund uh, which is going to be coming up in just a bit here right there and this little youngster is much more typically what you think of color wise when you're looking at an orangutan but again you can really see how the white of those eyes is so very dark and the veining from the edge of the iris into the white of the eye is so heavy that it it barely really makes the white of the eye actually white it's it's much more muddy and brown and and very dark and orangutan's faces their faces actually do change color as they age um, when they're real young they tend to be pink and and very red and and peach colored and as the age like MJ was in her late 30s uh, when she passed away um, and Tommy who is her cage mate he is also in his late 30s um, they have much more uh, dark faces more in the blue tones and not so uh, pink and bright was a lot of stages of, of letting it dry and then bringing in more layers because uh, I didn't want the uh, colors to get muddied there there was that uh, element of working with these intense pencils that I did like where I could lay on a real thin layer and get that real intense color um, and and bring the hues and the values to a new level and then uh, work on to other areas and have quite a bit control of it um, when I originally tested these out uh, I really didn't like the fact that if I, uh, I did not blend them all the way out the way I wanted to once they settled into the paper that um, that was it they were there forever and there wasn't any lifting them out or thinning them out right now I'm kind of going through and trying to establish those really dark veins well not veins so much as much as there are creases in her head but they look like veins when I'm painting them on there but they are actually creases in her head and this is where I kind of started getting off on a tirade because they kind of looked like trees and I was like eh, they could be like mountains and they could be trees and I could make her nose into a river and this could be rocks I tried to keep this really nice and loose so you had some kind of reference as to parts of her anatomy without spending too much time on it. I 
And I am going through and kind of working the, uh, the ink tents into the paper with uh, a variety of brushes. I had a 10 zero, a one, and a size three. So that one right there is like a size three. And I was kind of worried about getting too dark and with these ink tents, like I said, you can't lift them back out. So I was really worried about getting too dark or uh, making something too permanent. And this is only a five by seven study. So something small and quick and. But as you can see the proportion and MJ is a female. Um, the male orangutans are the ones with the really big uh, cheek pouches and the very wide faces, and that's all body fat. So the uh, larger the cheek plates and the side plates are on an orangutan, the more well fed they are. And that's one of the ways that an orangutan can. Uh, it is a, a nice visual pattern, just like with the mandrills, where a mandrill displays its. Uh, proudness and its health by um, uh, its vivid colors an orangutan male would display its fit and health by these massive uh, pouches and facial uh, plates that it grows on the side of its face because that is literally all fat so a uh, only a well-fed orangutan can have those and it's only the males that have those females don't have that but even on MJ here, you can see how very small in the face those eyes are in comparison to the overall size of her face. Now that I was pretty happy with uh, how dark uh, the eye sets were, I did go in and put the detail in the, the whites of her eyes. And I could probably go in and really darken down her eyes some more and really finish that up and get those the true depth. But I really kind of liked how, how bright they were, um, pretty livid uh, or vivid in the... Uh, in, in the light area. I didn't really get as dark on her face as I could have. Um, to me in her picture, she the picture that I took in her enclosure, she looked very afraid and I really didn't want that carrying through into the rendering. So that can easily be remedied by uh, how much light and shadow you give to your subjects. I think the larger amount of color that was used in this rendering also helped a great deal to kind of liven up her face and maybe make her look less fearful than she actually looked in the picture. But lots of shadow in the upper set right above the eyelid. Um, orangutan's eyes are set fairly well back and are protected by an awful lot of fat and brow. And they do have a fairly flat face compared to other uh, apes, such as like a spider monkeys or uh, chimpanzees or uh, bonobos. Much closer to that, like a gorilla. Just about done here. Uh, if you guys want to see any more on orangutans or another great ape, I do have uh, a gorilla coming up. So uh, we're pretty much going to end this one out. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Have a good one.